I did want to say to you all that um, my last video that Lane 1Q is an aromatic, which I really didn't do a whole lot of. I always, for some reason, presumed it wasn't. So all this time I've been smoking it, but I can tell you it's a very light flavored aromatic. Um, that's probably why it's very popular across many types of pipe smokers. So that was a that was an aromatic. But when it was mixed with the Molta Dolce, the Molta Dolce did not snap, crackle, pop. Everything else I said in that video was exactly true. The way it smoked, the way it smelled, the way that it actually balanced out the Molta Dolce a little bit. All right. Today, I'm going to review Cascadia Open Water. Now, I got this tobacco in a package that had a pipe, a mug, tins, some cleaners, it kind of came into a whole package, a pouch, and some other things um, within it. And it's a plug tobacco, so I'm going to review this today, but I'm also going to show everybody how you actually smoke and prepare a plug tobacco. So, first thing that I'm going to do is pop the tin, and I already kind of pre-loosened the top a little bit, so I wouldn't have to be here messing with that first thing that I notice is just an aromatic um, wood that came out of the tin oh yeah yeah very nice it has kind of a uh, fruity smell to it clean though it smells very clean might be why it's called open water it's almost reminds you of a um, you know when you do like a, a air freshener that has like Laundry or like ocean or something like that. Oh yeah. Wow. Very clean. Very nice. It's got a fruity, a little bit of citrusy, but it but when they mix with the tobacco, it just uh, mm, wow. Okay, that's that is first of all, that's impressive because I don't know what kind of quality these guys are, but that smell. Is great now there's a couple of things about a plug tobacco that you'll notice first thing you notice it looks like a little bit of a square block like this and where what happened with plug tobacco was very simply that plug tobacco used to be for people who would actually chew tobacco and not smoke it and somewhere along the line, actually pipe smokers got a hold of it and said, wow, this is like a really good uh, smoke as well. And so plug tobacco made its way over to pipe tobacco and kind of migrated over. And now we have plug tobacco. Now there's a couple of things that you can do. First of all, you'll notice as I could actually peel kind of these, these layers back a little bit, almost like thinly cut pieces of paper they're kind of stacked together maybe a little bit like bubble gum that's all kind of um together minus the minus the foil and you'll notice they're striped as well so you can peel and or you can also cut with your knife so you could take your knife and cut it back as well kind of peel it out and there's a couple of ways you can do this once again you could take this tobacco I just took a chunk out of here and you could take it and you could do the folding method and put it in your pipe and do it that way the other thing that you could do is kind of do a rubbing method where you actually and I'm gonna do it that way I'm actually gonna rub this out within the within the tin a little bit and just get almost like pieces of it so I can pack my pipe now one thing you're gonna notice um, with this particular tobacco is that as I'm kind of peeling it back and rubbing it out, um, it's a little bit, it's almost like beef jerky kind of texture a little bit on there. So you're going to have to really uh, spend some time rubbing out this tobacco and uh, doing it the right way. Now, first thing I'm noticing, normally plug tobacco is a lot moisture, has a lot more moisture content than other tobaccos. But this one in general actually seems to have been maybe dried out a little bit. Uh, so it doesn't seem like it's overly moist. All right, so I got a nice little little rub out here going on. 
Oh, the smell is still incredible. Oh, very clean, very clean. It's got a very nice, clean smell to it. I also have campsite, and I will be reviewing that as well down the line. Now, I'm going to actually take some more, and I'm going to get another layer and peel it off with my knife, and then rub that out as well. I love this. i got to show you guys this. This is literally a tobacco leaf that is dried right within the, the tobacco. Oh, that is lovely. That is so lovely. So cool seeing that within there. They probably meant for this to be more of the fold up and not the rub out, but I'm just rubbing it out and piecing it out as well. There will be a time where I actually do do it the other way, where I do the folding of it and put it in the pipe. But for now, I'm just going to keep rubbing this out a little bit here and get enough to pack my pipe. Let me just I'm gonna take a little more off here. Yeah. Use my knife here. Hang on. There we are. There we are. And I'll rub these out. These little leaves that I just peeled. And you can do this whatever way you want. You can do it as the fold method. You can do it as rub out method. Um, and, and smoke it whatever way. This is the way that I'm doing it right now. I'm just rubbing out the this. Yeah, once again, it is, it, for a plug tobacco, it is drier than most plugs. And even some flake. Yeah. Or cake. There we go. Okay, I have now rubbed this out. And I am now ready to pack my pipe. I'm going to pack it and I'll be right back. Um, for those of you that want to know how to pack a pipe, there are a lot of videos out there. I've actually created ones as well uh, for packing a pipe. Uh, do not never, ever, ever over pack a pipe. That can really get you into a lot of a lot of trouble, especially with tongue bite and flow and airflow and different things. So it is always better as as uh, Brad the Bearder Piper would say, it is always better to pack too light than too tight. So I'm going to pack this and I'll be right back. Okay, and we are back for this. This video today brought to you by Duncan. The pipe world runs on Duncan. Duncan, for all of your coffee drinking needs, I am a non sponsored person from Duncan. Actually, I'm not, a, I'm not sponsored by Duncan at all. So, hmm. I'm currently drinking a um, Duncan cold brew, regular cold foam with a couple of creams and a couple of sugars. It is delightful. I really like that cold foam. I'm really trying to get a feel for this tobacco. The room note smells a little bit stronger than the tin. Not by much. It does have kind of a clean smell on it. I'm smoking this through my Stanwell 63 Starling. A fine pipe this is. So let me uh, let me first go tin note on this. Tin note on this open water has a very fruity, citrusy note to it. It 
And when that mixes in with the tobacco, it gives you just a really nice clean smell. It is very, it's a very lovely tin note. It's a very light tin note. Really good smoke. Now, on the back of this tin, you will not find any description on it. It just basically says that it's distributed by M&D Wholesale, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It's a um, Denmark Scandinavian tobacco group. Uh, it just really doesn't give any other, other, um, uh, kind of hint as to what's actually in here. It is smoking very well. I did notice that it was, you know, it, it's drier than most plugs, but it's still moist. Plug tobacco keeps the moisture in because once they, you know, they um, put it into the block, it actually kind of locks the moisture in. It does. The the room note, by the way, is, is like the tin note on this one, except just a little bit, a little stronger, but not in a bad way. It still smells very clean, very clean smell on this tobacco. On some level, it almost smells like you're purifying the air with an air freshener <laughs> of sorts. Ah, that is some fine coffee. So the room note is very lovely. It's not going to make your room smell like your baking cookies or anything like that, but it's going to make the room smell fresh. That's really hard to explain if you're not smoking this. Mm. Very mild, very mild. It's also a very mild smoke. It's not a, it's not by far a tougher smoke. It is a milder smoke. You could smoke this as a nightcap. You could smoke this as a morning blend because of the citrusy flavor if you like orange juice and different things and fruitiness. I'm actually enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this smoke right now. Also, go Bills. Yeah, I know. They barely beat the Dolphins. Dolphins had a third string quarterback. Dolphins have a good third stringer. And what I've found is most quarterbacks, especially if they're third string, really have been waiting and chomping at the bit to play. And that guy played very well for uh, being a third string. But a win is a win. So we move on. And next, go back to the Bengals. Lovely blend. Lovely blend. Once again, Cascadia, open water. It's not the most flavorful. It's not the most citrusy that you will smoke, but it has a nice fruitiness, and it's super clean smelling. That's I just keep saying that. The room note, the actual tin note, has a, has a clean smell to it. It, um... If I had to gauge it to other tobaccos that are more expensive, less expensive, what they taste like versus back and forth, this would probably come down into the cheaper, uh, kind of. As far as taste and smoke and all that, but it's not bad. It's, it's not bad at all. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty decent. So, 
If any of you have been tuning in to the pipe world, you know that there was a little bit of rift between two YouTubers. Both of them very respective in their own right and very good in their own right as well. They're probably two pipe smokers that come from very opposite views when it comes to pipe smoking. I don't really think neither is wrong with the way they approach their channels and pipe smoking. Maybe we kind of have like a pipe civil war going on. Bum, 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 bum. We have maybe a north versus south. And by the way, I do love I love the Civil War era. I don't personally like to get wrapped up in other people's um you know, war. But I did watch the videos. And I will say that the, um, the one channel released an apology video. I'm just going to tell you guys that it takes a big man to do that, to actually release a, a video saying, hey, I was wrong, and the way I approached it was wrong, and, you know, uh, the way that I responded was the wrong thing. That takes a lot. I think what I believe is there are two distinct maybe three distinct kind of classes within pipe smoking. You have some people who, you know, they have money. Um, they're very sophisticated. They have voice. They're very educated. And, um, and that's who they are as people. That's their personality. That's who they are. And there is nothing wrong with that. You have kind of a middle class uh, pipe smoking. Which is both can be people who are upper mid, mid, middle class and blue collar and white collar middle class and blue collar middle class. And they kind of sit in the middle. And you have um, blue collar which is, you know, people who, who work hard and uh, kind of make this country go around. I just got a piece of ice, but that was nice. And, you know, blue-collar people, they work hard, you know. My dad was blue-collar. He built houses and... Worked his way out of blue collar to where he owned his own company and ended up building very nice houses for CEOs of the uh, Glassworks locally, Corning Incorporated. I worked with my dad as a blue collar worker for a while and then um, went away to college and got into music and music industry and got into um you know, more more white collar work and then to this day I'm still I'm now what they call white collar though I dress blue collar so never want to lose my roots I am the guy that as I'm smoking a pipe I'm in a t-shirt I'm normally in a hat I don't dress up in a suit jacket and a vest you see is what you get on a weekly basis.
even when I'm doing my church work. Sundays I will throw on a collared shirt and look nice for church. So, where do I stand on the Civil War of the Pike Community 2023? I like both of these guys. I really do. I watch all kinds of pipe videos. I've learned so much from all of them that I have nothing negative to say on either of these guys. I think somebody expresses their opinion. That's what it is. It's their opinion. It's their viewpoint on something. But I can tell you this. I, I got to say this to everybody out there in the pipe community. We, we are a small-knit community compared to other things, like compared to sports and music and entertainment and how-tos and all this other stuff. We're, we're really on the smaller side. We know that you can't monetize what we're doing. I just want to see everybody get along. That's all. I want to see us as brothers in this fine, fine art and hobby get along and get together. Lay down the sword. Listen, I know people come off the wrong way. Everybody does, even myself. At the end of the day, you're my brother and my sister in the pipe community. And the war isn't internal. The war is external. The war is the government regulation. The war is what the laws that are being passed is trying to do to this hobby and to the companies that run this and to people who are trying to upstart companies and you know, taking away this hobby from everybody. We can certainly pass laws for the marijuana, you know, lobbyists, but for pipe smoking and tobacconists and mom and pop shops, the government has done a great job of running them out of business. So we can either divert our energy towards one another or we can divert our, our energy on education, educating each other, teaching each other, band of brothers kind of stuff. One goal moving forward. I'm not going to take a side on this. And that might sound like it's a, you know, kind of a cop out. But I'm not because both of them are my brothers. I have found good camaraderie within this. And I have found within, within tragedy there's a support system. Some of you have got enormous amount of influence. And that is a good thing. Especially we need it within our hobby. Some of us get on and we may only have 20, 30, 50 subscribers. Uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people watching our videos, but we're all still together. So that's all I want to say today. I want to say that Banding together is a good thing. You might be an atheist, you might be a Buddhist, you might be a Christian, you might be an... In agnostic. You might be a communist. I don't know. Socialist. Democrat, Republican, Independent... Green Party, I don't care. You're still my brother. 
we're still in this country. And I appreciate you all. Every single one of you. I appreciate every single one of you. So, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say the old quote, Can't we all just get along? I have a dream. It is actually Martin Luther King Day. I have a dream where every pipe smoker will have equal say and equal rights. Where a tobacconist has the right of a jeweler. Where a pipe smoker has the same right as a non-pipe smoker vegan chicken grower. All right, I'm done with ramp, but let's just get along. We're all brothers in this thing. We all smoke pipe. We're the ones that are under attack from our government. We're the ones that are under attack by non-smokers. We're the ones that are under attack by the lobbyists and, you know, and every other thing in Washington. We are the ones that are under attack. So we don't have time to be, you know, kind of bickering at each other. We get back to this. Cascadia Open Water... This is what I'm going to say about this particular smoking tobacco. Tin smell. Tim note. I will give this a three. It's pretty good. Maybe a two and a half-ish, three. But it is good. It's got a very nice clean smell. But it's not overly aromatic. It's got just a really kind of even keel. Room note. Three. It is a very light room note. It smells a little bit like an air freshener on some level. It doesn't taste like that. It actually has a citrusy kind of taste. Very mild tobacco taste. Very mild tobacco. Good for breakfast. Good for a nightcap. It has a fruitiness and a citrusy taste. If you like that in the morning, this is probably a good morning pipe for you. As far as the... Um, the smoke quality on this. I would definitely give that about a three and a half. Smoking a little warm, but it's an aromatic. And um, I did have to relight it a couple of times, but nothing nothing too major. It, had, it is staying lit pretty well. So I think overall... It's, it's a solid three overall. Yeah. It, it, it really... Uh, it really is not a bad smoke. I, I got to be honest. I thought when I got this stuff, the reason why they're giving away is that it was going to be the nastiest smoke in the world and taste like dog poop. I was actually pleasantly surprised. It's actually good smoke. So I hope you guys learned something about, you know, plug tobacco, kind of how to smoke it. Remember, it gets it gets compacted together. It strips off in layers. You could actually fold those layers if you wanted to to smoke it, or you can rub it out. I actually cut it and rubbed it out. What I did notice with this is that it wasn't um, put together in a way in which it rubbed out like some do. It actually has whole leaf sitting in there, so you have to do a little bit more of rubbing and, and kind of getting it more crumbled in to be able to pack it if you want to smoke it that way. If you want to actually fold it and put it in your pipe and smoke it that way and just make sure that it's always below the rim of the pipe, you can do that as well. And I'll, I will try that method too now that I, you know, you never know kind of the way that it's made until you kind of get in there and start rubbing it out and seeing what's going on. I also find that the word rubbing out is, is quite funny, especially in the pipe community. Double meanings, right? <laughs> Only if you're married. So, I am Professor Pipe Smoker. Prove of my stand well. I always approve of my stand. I love this pipe. Oh, this word genie, I wish I could call the genie to it. Hands are dirty again because I'm getting my hands dirty building my studio. And, uh, hey, take care of each other. Band together. We have a bigger war to fight than with one another. Unity in the pipe community. That actually rhymed. Unity in the pipe community. 
I'll use that one. And uh, appreciate all of you guys, YTPC. You guys are amazing, and I'll see you on the next video.